I wanted to circle us back to that cybernetic dysfunction idea again. Goals, representations, and actions. That's how the cybernetic system goes. There's a goal toward which I am moving, which is valuable in light of my historical experience, which informs how I perceive where I am in relation to that goal and creates a set of actions from which I may choose in order to close the gap between where I am and where I wanna be. So again, cybernetic dysfunction, psychopathology, we might say all pathology occurs when there's a failure to adjust goals, representations, or actions. So this reframing idea is doing nothing but adjusting the representation of the current situation relative to what one wants for themselves. That's all that happens here is an adjustment of representation. And that's not to say that that solves all problems, but when we perceive our circumstances differently, different actions make themselves available as options. If I can clarify the representation of the world that I dwell within now, I may become aware that certain things are actually constrained that I thought were available before. Maybe then I stop banging my head into the wall. Or I may see that there is an affordance in the landscape that I didn't yet recognize was available. And that may prove to be a better option than what I was doing before. So I say that nothing in particular happens in reframing except for a change in representation effectively a change in perception, but a change in perception makes possible a change in action. It may also bring about a change in the goals themselves. So although nothing happens here, a lot occurs. Reframing can be a tricky thing for people to wrap their heads around. So I wanted to give just a very basic example Reframing occurs when you demonstrate to someone the adaptive value of the thing they're complaining about. So someone comes to you and they say, oh, I'm just so depressed. It's such a problem for me to feel so down. Hmm. What we can do is demonstrate the value of the thing about which they are complaining. And there's a really simple way that you can start to work with this. If you get um, a sheet of paper, or you could just, I don't know, they've got the margins up there. You could draw in the margins. But you could write on one hand the sort of undesirable state. And that could be an adjectival description. That could be um, a whole phrase like, I'm fucking broke, or I hate myself, or I can't stand my neurotic fixations, or I'm, I don't know, I'm lonely, I'm this, I'm that, I'm any undesirable state that comes to mind. I'm in pain, I'm such and such. And when you write that, you can then look at, what do you imagine the other side of that would be? If a pole stretches here, what's the opposite of that? Or what's the desired state relative to this undesired state? I'm lonely. Well, I want friends. I'm broke. I wanna be Jeff Bezos. I'm this, I wanna be that. Then underneath those, you might write, some of the reasons why you want the desired state. Like what's the good thing about the desired state? You could do a couple of bullet points. And you could do a couple of bullet points about what's so bad about this undesired state. And then it's like you could hold up a mirror somehow 
along the page. And then maybe draw a line underneath some of those bullets. And you flip it and you think, well, what would some of the downsides of this desired state be? Again, we've got this idea that there is cost and gain with everything. That, that's how we start thinking psychologically, is recognizing that there's a cost. So if it's like, I'm lonely, I want friends, friends, it's more things to do, I feel better about myself, but the costs, oh boy, well then I have to like give a shit about people. Oh, and I have to like check in with them and oh my God, like what happened? I might worry about them or oh my God, I might like fall short of their expectations. They might call me out on my shit, you know, all this stuff. And then, and this is the part that usually people are a little reluctant or hesitant to get into, but what's the gain of this undesired state? can be a hard thing to wrap one's head around. But if, uh, for instance, you are in chronic pain, well, by God, you've got the world's best excuse to turn down the invitation from your weird cousin to that thing that they always invite you to that you never want to go to. But, uh. Or, oh, these chronic headaches. Well, I never have to put up with terrible sex with that partner I hate because, uh, my head hurts. Ouch. Not tonight. Or if you're fucking broke, you have nothing to lose. That's a gain. You have no responsibility over anything. That's a gain. So we can see that there's like some sneaky little attribute that might be a plus about this undesired state. This is a really simple way to start reframing some of these desired changes people might like to make. Now you could go back through and think, huh, okay, so historically, I've been willing to get all of these negatives for this set of positives. Moving forward, would I be willing to take on all of those negatives for those positives? Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe you look at that and you think, whoa, actually like having friends sounds like more trouble than it's worth. Ooh. Being rich, oh, you have to pay taxes on that. People ask you for money and stuff. Ooh, do I want to be rich? So you might see that there's actually some wiggle room between these kind of hyperbolic poles that maybe you've established at the start. Or you might have an informed choice available to you that says, you know what? It's not going to be a free ride, but I like that set of benefits more than this set of benefits. And I'm willing to pay those costs more than I'm willing to pay these costs. Does that change anything at all about the current situation? No. Only that it changes how you view the situation which maybe changes how you organize yourself in relation to the situation, which maybe changes your whole freaking life, perhaps. <laughs>